Hello, faithful viewer, listener. Nice to see you this morning. I've recently signed up for Bandcamp's subscription service. What this means is that with a $3 a month or more pledge, you can become my Bandcamp subscriber and you will get basically everything that I've ever recorded. Plus, uh, you'll be among the first to hear when I release new stuff. You know, I was thinking about how to announce Bandcamp subscription to you, and I thought uh, one cool way to do that would be to take you through the discography that's on there and the all the stuff that you're gonna you're gonna get if you um, subscribe to me on uh, Bandcamp subscription for three dollars or more a month. If you're interested, it'll sort of give you a a look and listen at really how I've developed as a songwriter over the years. So the first like proper album that I put out by myself was this thing. At this point, I'm just calling it the first album. I think back in the day, I just called it Jonathan Mann. Um, it was mostly recorded in, I think like 2001. It's like 14 years ago, which is insane to me. Um, it was recorded in Nashville. Uh, it's just me and an acoustic guitar. My friend Haley, her dad was like some sort of Nashville uh, producer guy and she convinced him to uh, give me some time in his studio. And I think it was like my first time ever like really in a studio. So it was like, it was a big deal to me and I wanted to be Bob Dylan really bad. So there's like a lot of like Bob Dylan-esque stuff happening on this record. Um, you know, a, a lot of these early ones were ones that I made in college. I was in college from 2000 to 2004 and at Bennington in Vermont. And what what we musicians would do at Bennington back in those days, I don't know how it works these days, but we would, we would you know, we would make our records and then burn like CDRs of them and, you know, photocopy covers and then go sit uh, right outside the dining hall where everyone would go in you know, to go eat, and we would try to get people to buy, <laughs> buy our CDs. And um, so I sold, you know, sold a few copies that way of this. There's some pretty good songs on, on this record still. Uh, my favorites, I would say, are um, the first track, Doesn't Ask for Plastic, Killed the Circus in My Head, track eight. And then I think my, my really favorite track is track 11, I'm 18 and I do art. That's, I think that's uh, still a pretty funny song. I think it stands up to time. Okay, let's look at the next, let's look at the next one. The next one is the first time that I ever recorded something myself. It was my first semester in um, sound recording class at Bennington. And I put out this thing called Folk Rock Hero. And um, yeah, it, it, it's very much <laughs> my first experience with recording and you can sort of hear that and I had a variety of people playing on it and I had no idea what I was doing. I can remember sitting there trying to like mix it and I just had no, like literally I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but it sort of came out, I like the way it came out to a certain extent. Uh, on another level, I just can't listen to it at all. My favorite track on this one is again, track 11. Uh, it's, a, it's a thing called Childhood. I think that song, uh, I really like the way that song sounds. So that's Folk Rock Hero. Next up is this uh, this record called the, the Last Nympho Leprechaun. This was a collaboration with Thomas Hughes of the Spinto Band. We got together and made this big rock opera called The Last Nympho Leprechaun. And we also collaborated on making all the songs for it. This was a combination of working in the studio at Bennington, uh, which was not much to speak of. And also this was the first time that I'd ever um, put anything together like in a home recording situation. So in my dorm room, I had gotten some, a microphone and you know a little MIDI keyboard and a USB interface for getting audio into my computer. And this was the first time that I ever experienced that. Um, my favorite track from this one is number seven. It's called On Our Way. Um, and yeah, this was another Bennington thing. I think this was 2002. Um, okay, so this one's pretty funny. 
This one is called 30, 31 Songs About Canfield. And all this was, was Canfield was the dorm that I lived in. We called them houses. And uh, I was the house chair of Canfield, which basically is like an RA. I was like sort of in charge of everyone in the house. Um, uh, and so I, I, you know, the house chairs had to get to school early. And one of our, one of our many tasks in preparing for the rest of the students to arrive was to come up with some sort of signage for everybody's doors. So we need to put everybody's name, you know, on everybody's doors so everyone, uh, especially the incoming freshmen, like knew where they were going and stuff. Um, and there was like a, a, a contest to see who could come up with the best signs for the doors. Um, so what I did that year is I wrote a song for everyone in the, the house. Um, some people I knew, you know, the people from that had been there the year previous, I knew um, the incoming freshmen, I just went off of their like housing form. You know, they had to fill out a form about like who they were and what kind of music they were into and like, you know, what kind of TV shows they liked and stuff. And so I used those to, to make their songs. And so when people arrived, everybody had a CDR on their door with just like their name on it. And um, they put it in and it was a song about them. And so that's what this is. This is a collection of all of those songs. Uh, I don't think I have a favorite on this one. They're pretty silly. Um, maybe Dylan is a breakdancing fool. That's my friend Dylan Thuris. That's a pretty good song. That's track number 10. All right. Uh, next up we have this thing called 40 second songs, 31 out of, 37 out of 100. The, the Canfield song sort of bled into this project, which was these two things were very, very early experiments in sort of the ethos of Song A Day, which is just making a lot of stuff very quickly. And so the goal was to write 100 songs, um, 100 like really short, silly songs. And I ended up doing 37 of them. And uh, a lot of them were remakes of the Canfield. Some of them were like remakes of the Canfield songs. Um, and I also uh, got my, my friend Tom and my friend Catherine to sing with me on it. And um, I really, I have a warm, you know, a soft spot in my heart for this record. I think my favorite song, God, I can't even find it, uh, is called She's Going to London, track 30. That's my favorite song off that. Uh, okay, so this record, this little EP is called I've Got a Bigger Radio. This is not something that I ever like really released, but these were just tracks that I had been working on uh, in my dorm room, sort of just teaching myself how to record more and just like working on different kinds of things. Um, these, most of these have something to do with my childhood, uh, which I, you know, continue to sort of sing about. Um, and my favorite track off of this one is, I don't know, I don't think I have a favorite track off of this one, but uh, it's an interesting like little in-between period that you can hear. Um, so this one is called Novox the Robot, and um, this, is, this is many friends of mine's favorite thing that I've ever done, which is very interesting. Um, it sort of was started out as an idea for a rock opera about a robot and all kinds of stuff. But um, it was sort of me experimenting with a lot of like crazy electronics. Well, for me, crazy electronic sounds. Um, and so it was kind of a de departure for me. And it was, it's kind of dark. There's like a darkness to it and it's very electronic. And I used mostly vocoder and also this like computerized singing voice thing. Um, and people really responded to it. Um, my favorite track on this one, I like them all actually. I'm, I'm sort of a, still a fan of this, of this record. And uh, I've tried to sort of get that sound back, but there was something very special about, I, hadn't, I sort of didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I was using a program called Reason and I was still very new at it and I didn't know what I was doing. And I think the fact that I didn't know what I was doing kind of made this record what it is. And I don't think I can ever recapture that sort of like just blind jumping into it thing. All right, so that would be a good one to, to get. And again, $3 a month or more. And all of this, all of this is yours for immediate download. And uh, you will also have the satisfaction of knowing that you're really helping me and my family to survive on 
on a more steady income, which is really important. Um, so um, this one is called There Are So Many Possibilities, and it came out of um, uh, Song Fight, which is a weekly song competition online, which is still around. But back in 2003 and 2004 and into 2005, I was doing Song Fight pretty much every week. And um, this, uh, this album called There Are So Many Possibilities is just sort of a, a collection of my favorite uh, song fight songs from that from that period. I think you know, there's over a hundred of them, but I chose, I guess, 15 of them that were my favorite. I think my favorite is There Are So Many Possibilities. I really like that song. It's very, it's a, it's, I like how it came out. Uh, so check that one out. And then this record is called Songs for Girls. <laughs> And, um, you know, I went to grad school at, at CalArts, um, which is in California, and um, I had a girlfriend all through college, and at the end of college, we broke up, and, um, you know, we had been together for almost five years, and I didn't know, I didn't know how to behave as sort of a, as a uh, adult who was trying to meet girls and women, so... Um, a lot of times I would just write songs for them <laughs> uh, without even really knowing them that well, just as like a way to say, hi, I like you or whatever, but um, very embarrassing now. Um, but it's worth a listen to some of these. It's, it's, it's pretty funny. Um, yeah, a lot of these are pretty great. Um, number two, Madison Metro is, is, a, is, a, is a favorite of mine on Songs for Girls. Uh, next up we have, this is self-explanatory, we have the Mario Opera, which is uh, the demos that I recorded uh, before um, staging and, and performing and, you know, playing with the band for the Mario Opera. Um, these, the next thing is Mario A Opera Act 2 and 3 demos, and that is um, the demos that I made for Acts 2 and 3, uh, which never got performed, um, and frankly, it never really got finished but they're still, people still really like those, which is interesting. Um, then we have the Mushroom Singdom. The Mushroom Singdom was a, a weekly singing review show that I did for oneup.com where I sang reviews about video games. So this is a lot of songs. This is 75 songs, 75 like short songs about video games. A lot of these, I have to be honest with you, I really don't like, but, but people do like them. Um, Juario's one of his favorite songs of mine was was on here called Gates of Thunder. Um, Landstalker number eighteen is a favorite of mine on here. So Mushroom Singdom. I should mention that these songs, these albums, I've taken off my Bandcamp page. So the only way you can hear them now is if you become a subscriber, uh, either on Patreon or a Bandcamp subscriber. Uh, if you do a Bandcamp, you'll get immediate download of all of this stuff. I just decided that I kind of wanted to clean up my Bandcamp band page a little bit and just have some more recent things on there, not have all this old stuff. But f I figured if you're gonna, if you'd be willing to pay me $3 a month or more for this Bandcamp subscription, then you'd be probably the kind of person that would want to hear all this stuff. And frankly, if, if any of you can't afford the $3 a month on Bandcamp and still really want to hear something off of this, just write to me and, and I'll send it to you. Um, cause I, you know, cause if you're that interested, then I'm happy to, to send it along. Uh, next up we have, um, this, this little collection of songs that I made called Tonight I'm Gonna Shave My Head. Um, after I graduated from CalArts, before I moved to Berkeley, I was doing like a video a day as Game Do. Um, it was really hard and uh, I was writing a lot of songs and this is just sort of a collection of that sort of tail end of Game Do period songs that I wrote. Um, my favorite is this song about Neurosky. Uh, number 10, Neurosky, Moving Stuff With Your Mind. That's that's the one to listen to there. Um, here I was doing briefly, in the second year of Song A Day, I was doing this thing called Blowing the Dust Out of the Cartridge That Is My Mind, which is just like an old Game Jew thing where I talk about old video games. 
Uh, and I was doing covers of classic Nintendo games like Life Force and Marble Madness and Double Dragon, Excite Bike, Mario 1 and 2, 3D World Runner, and The Legend of Zelda. So this is just a collection of my remixes of those games. Yeah, and then everything else that you would get um, as a result of becoming a supporter on Bandcamp with a monthly pledge of $3 or more would be all my song a day songs. So year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six. I'm really bad about updating um, the current year, but usually what I do is towards the end of the year, I just go through and I, uh, I upload all the songs all at once. Um, that may change in the coming year, but for this year, you know, you would have through year six completely, and then at the end of the year, you would have everything else um, in year seven. I also put together um, some mixtapes, um, like the social justice songs that I've done, the social justice bard mixtape, the um, I'm not a shy guy mixtape, which is like a lot of the nerdier songs that have come out of Sci- uh, Song A Day, um, my Apple songs as a mixtape. Uh, this is just uh, a single and a single. And then you would get my my more produced my more produced records as well. You would get everything. You'd get the Barefoot and the Family Tree EP, which was uh, recorded at the end of the first year of Song A Day at Coyote Hearing Studios in Oakland. You'd get the Very Nice King Christmas album that I made. You'd get the album Animals, which was um, a, a couple years ago. You'd get the new Harry Potter album that came out not long ago. You'd get Song A Day the album, which was uh, in 2011 a Kickstarter project and you'd get the Everyday EP that I put out around 2,000 songs, the the electronic songs. Um, So yeah, that's everything you'd get for $3 a month or more. Um, You know, in addition, like I said, to the the joy and pleasure of knowing that you would be contributing to a much more steady income for me, which uh, is something that I'm very much craving these days. So if you at all can afford it, Um, It would mean so much to me. And uh, you would of course get early access to um, to new, any new albums that I put out as well. Um, I'm planning on a new record uh, coming out in January. For those of you that have been enjoying the more sort of acoustic stuff that I've done, like the song uh, With No Bullshit that I put out last week to go along with the Mario Maker level, uh, it's going to basically be a whole, a whole album of songs like that. Um, re, mostly redos of old Song of Day songs, but uh, but sort of more thought out. And I've been working really, really hard on them. I've been working on it for the last eight months or so. Um, rewriting songs and just like really digging deep into these songs and, and trying to make them to be as best as I can as I can make them. So that'll be coming out around January and you'd have immediate access to that. Oh yeah, I was also thinking about uploading some other stuff that I sort of haven't wanted available to the public, like my Wii songs. Back when I was Game Joy, I wrote, I wrote, I don't know, something like 70 songs about the Wii. (laughs) And uh, I'll upload those and you'd have access to those. And as an even further back thing, I was thinking about somewhere I have a tape of like myself uh, singing songs that I wrote when I was really young, like 12, 13, and 14 years old. And I was thinking about just uploading those. Um, If you want to, again, like if you want to know how I got to where I am as a songwriter, um, it's all right here, basically. You can hear very clearly, if you go all the way back, you can hear the progression. And you can hear how, in some ways, like my sensibilities are the same. I still like the same kind of things, but you know, I've just gotten so much better over the years, and a lot of it has just been from doing it, you know, every single day and and working really hard at it. Um, and yeah, I think you can hopefully hear that in in all of this. It's called the Maniac Club, and it's uh, here on Bandcamp. And I really hope that you. Uh, want to do it. So I love you guys. Thank you for watching me every day. And uh, you're the coolest. Yeah. I never know how to end a video. Goodbye. <laughs>